What's good YouTube? Precog from headphones.com here and this is the Fat Freak Master Mini. Yes, that is the company's actual name. Feel free to suggest an alternative name below if they ever decide to get around to doing a rebrand. Uh, but yes, that is the company's name. Okay, so this is a one dynamic driver, two balanced armature setup that will set you back to the tune of $600. If you could buy it, that is, as I believe at the time in which I am recording this video, it still has not even been released. Let's not waste too much time going over the goods. Here's the case it comes with. It is basically like an AliExpress Pelican case that has been outfitted with custom foam inserts to store the IM. You can see that you have desiccant in the center here, which acts as a peg to wrap the cable around. And then there are slots for earplugs on the left. And then on the right, there is a slot for a cleaning tool. The cable that comes with the Maestro Mini is definitely pretty cheap. It has that plasticky feel to it. And then at the ear hooks, you can see that it has that memory wire, which I absolutely abhor. But maybe that's a good thing if you are an actual stage musician and are planning to use this IM in that capacity. Here are the faceplates of the IM. They are very pretty in my opinion. I definitely find myself glued to them. It's a very dark blue and it sort of makes you want to look, just stare at them like very deeply, I think is what it is that uh, appeals to me about them. For fit and comfort, they are very small IMs. I really don't think most people would have an issue with fitting them. I do observe a bit of minor driver flex, so that there's a little bit of crinkling when you sometimes move around. But outside of that, nothing really that would trigger any alarm bells for uh, at least myself in terms of the comfort. Okay, let's talk about the actual sound now. And before I talk about the Maestro Mini sound, I think it makes more sense to go into a segue about the neutral sub bass tuning. This is a style of tuning that has become increasingly saturated in the last couple of years with the advent of very solid releases like the uh, Moondrop Blessing 2 Dusk, the Symphonium Helios, the RSV, the Monarch, the Clairvoyance, the... Okay, but you get my point. There are a lot of items in this category nowadays and the reason for that is pretty simple. Given that a bass shelf does not infringe upon the mid-range frequencies, which is what usually happens when there's too much mid-bass, you can actually get away with boosting the bass in an IM quite a bit and not having it muddy the sound excessively. In fact, pretty much all the IMs that I've mentioned have like 8 to 10 dB bass shelves, which is pretty insane in the grand scheme of things. But then you have this. What the Maestro Mini does here is kind of unprecedented. It has nearly 20 decibels of sub bass. And again, to lend context, those other IMs I was talking about, they all have roughly like 8 to 10 dBs at most. And again, that's already a lot. So 20 dB of bass boost is just gargantuan. There's nothing on the market with this much bass boost, or at least this much bass boost, this controlled under 300 Hertz. Um, and that is a key distinction there. It just tickles, it rumbles your ears, and you can feel that sense of physicality in the, uh, I mean, most of the physicality in bass, I think, comes from the sort of the sub bass frequencies under 50 Hertz, the, at least the ones that sort of tickle your ears and make your eardrum vibrate. And that is exactly what the Maestro Mini excels at conveying in music. So if there's one standout about the Maestro Mini, make no mistake that it is the bass response. And it is an item that you're gonna to wanna to give a listen if you're an extreme bass set. So moving into the mid-range, the mid-range actually sounds balanced. This is really not something that you get with a lot of IMs this bass boosted. Normally they have an aggressive rise to the upper mid-range to sort of try and balance out that bass boost. And this applies to the lower treble as well. The sort of issue that you run into that is that it can come across as somewhat aggressive at louder volumes and especially on tracks that don't have as much bass. The other issue with this, of course, is that vocal timbre is not correct with these type of tunings. Uh, female vocals tend to sound a little bit glossy, a bit too stuck in head voice, whereas by contrast, male vocals tend to sound scooped out. With the approach that the Maestro Mini has taken, you do find yourself with a more distant mid-range presentation where you'll find yourself cranking up the volume to hear vocals more. But at the same time, the timbre of them is not impeded. And there's no sense of that, like, again, that sort of glassiness, that head voice thing that I really don't like on a lot of V-shaped IMs. Now, the trouble response of the Maestro Mini is quite interesting. As I just alluded to, when you have an IM this bassy, the lazy approach to sort of balancing out that bass boost is usually with a strong peak in the lower trouble around like five or six K Hertz. Of course, the issue with this is that you end up with, again, that sense of compression, that sense of like, I don't know, that sense of like chalkiness to percussive hits that just doesn't sound good in my opinion. It just doesn't sound natural. I think the way the Maestro Mini addresses this issue of excessive bass in the treble is better. 
It does so by boosting the 10 to 15k hertz regions. It's interesting because when you look at a lot of items on paper, they don't have as much presence in these regions. And while the Master Mini might look a bit rolled off after 16k hertz, realistically a lot of people cannot hear that high in those frequencies. And at the same time, because this item is already so bassy, they'll just naturally assume that those frequencies are being masked by the bass. Here's the bottom line if I've lost you geeking out on the frequency response. The Master Mini does not have the best treble response, but it takes a fairly elegant uh, approach to sort of circumventing the traditional limitations of an IM this bassy. If you want to sort of understand some of the technology behind it, Fat Freak is actually using a tubeless balanced armature that has been mounted directly at the nozzle of the IM. This is kind of similar to the stuff that 64 Audio uses at the same time, though this isn't a completely unlidded balanced armature. But again, it's in that same vein and it's a pretty I don't want to say it's like novel, but it's a pretty unusual approach that you don't see often. Okay, let's briefly talk about technicalities. In general, I would place the Master Mini at around a uh, solid B plus overall for its technical performance. Detail can definitely come across a bit smeared, especially in the mid range, which as I said earlier, it tends to sound a bit further away from you, which in turn, of course, makes it harder to uh, sort of perceive a sense of clarity from it. That said, I will say that I do not find imaging to be bad at all on the Master Mini. In fact, I think it is slightly above average. It's not the most precise set for discerning instrument positions, but at the same time, there is a decent sense of ambiance on the soundstage. It doesn't sound uh, particularly congested in my opinion. If you want my thoughts on the timbre and the coherency, I actually think that they are pretty good. Um, the timbre in particular is not bad at all. Uh, and I think that this is to attribute to a couple of reasons. One, it's a tubeless balance armature, and two, it's that presence from 10 to 15 kHz. Uh, what you'll notice with a lot of IMs that dip 10 to 15 kHz by contrast is that they tend to sound a bit gritty and they have that like sandpaper quality that a lot of people attribute to balance armatures. And um, that is exactly what this does not have. I mean, it doesn't sound like 100% natural, it doesn't sound like it has quote unquote sweet treble, as some people might like to say, but at the same time, again, it doesn't sound bad at all. For comparisons, there's really not too many comparisons that I can think of off of the top of my head. Again, there's really just, again, nothing on the market this bass boosted. Um, I think maybe the closest one that comes to mind would be the Moondrop Variations. That is also around the $500 ballpark and it has a strong sub bass shelf. I think the distinction that you're going to notice here is that the Variations, it's definitely more technical. It's definitely cleaner in its presentation, but at the same time, it is also a more forward listen, especially in the upper mid range, and it comes across as more aggressive, more, what's the word, less smooth, I think. That's just a better way of summing it up. If you want a more smooth listen, a warmer, more engaging listen, then I think that the uh, Maestro Mini would be the way to go, even if you're trading some technical performance as a result. Okay, so what's the bottom line here? The Maestro Mini is definitely a niche listen, but at the same time, it fulfills that niche tastefully. If you're willing to sidestep some of the build quality issues that I've cited, then I think that this is an IM well worth giving a shot if you are a base head. Just in general though, it's really exciting for me when a small brand pops out with something novel like the Maestro Mini. And it definitely has my hopes up about this brand now. Although that, that name though. <laughs> Anyways, thanks so much for watching and I will catch you guys in my next video.